numerous reports have just emerged that Chinese cars, particularly Chinese electric cars, are clogging up and blocking ports in Europe. Apparently, there are so many Chinese cars right now that they are saying there are hordes of cheap electric cars uh, that Europe is very concerned about. And apparently, for a variety of reasons, which I'm about to explain, Chinese EVs have piled up at European ports and are basically just sitting there. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Now, we haven't seen any response here from any of the manufacturers um, of these electric cars. Who, who, who are the manufacturers? Well, of course, you've got BYD. There's quite a few BYD cars at ports right now. There's a vehicles from, in fact, a, a number of different manufacturers, MG vehicles. There's also cars from Neo and even some X-Pung vehicles as well. The threat of hordes of cheap EVs per Clean Technica made in China has governments concerned in Europe and the US. And, and the truth is, yeah, I mean, Europe has, they've said that they've done an official investigation. They've found that the Chinese government is um, intentionally putting, giving direct, direct subsidies to BYD, MG and other, basically every Chinese car manufacturer. For every EV they sell, every car they sell in China, in Europe, they get a direct subsidy payment direct to their bank accounts. Apparently this is happening, but Tesla is not getting these payments. Only um, Chinese actual companies are getting them. The US tariff on Chinese EVs is 27.5%. This has prevented Chinese electric cars from being sold in America. Now there are a few that are manufactured in China and then sold in America. Polestar, for example. Also, you've got um, General Motors made EVs that are sold in America. But the only reason that that happens is because GM sends some of their cars that are made in America to China and the American government allows a one-to-one -one swap. So if you sell one car made in America in China, then you're allowed to import for no import tax fees whatsoever, one car made in China to America. I think that's a kind of a fair trade. However, um, right now there's a bit of hysteria about the um, the concern of Chinese EVs flooding the global car market and basically taking over car markets worldwide and getting rid of, um, basically annihilating manufacturing in Europe and in America. Senator Joss Hawley, though, um, a Republican, has introduced a bill that would raise tariffs on EVs from China to 100% to protect US auto workers from the existential threat posed by China. 100% seems ridiculous to me. That's um, insane. What do you guys think? Is this a good idea? Anyway, BYD now has uh, seven car carrying ships. And in fact, there was, when I last checked, more than 130 different car carrying ships being built for Chinese car manufacturers in order to obviously um, expand overseas. And now we know that China is the biggest exporter of vehicles worldwide. They've overtaken Germany, they've overtaken California, they've, over, they've overtaken Japan within the last six months. They're growing at a really, really fast pace. Yelopnik and Quartz have cited a report by the Financial Times that says Chinese manufacturers are sending more EVs to Europe than they can actually sell. This has led to thousands of them being parked at port facilities. Now, I've reported on this the interesting phenomenon that BOD is not really succeed, succeeding in selling cars in Europe. It just hasn't really worked out. BOD are doing really well in other places like Thailand and Australia, uh, Israel, but in Europe, their vehicles haven't been received so positively. So now they're starting to pile up at ports. The port operators aren't happy because of the glut of cars that are interfering with other port activities. Some say that they are no longer ports, but they are car parks for newly arrived Chinese electric cars. That's kind of an interesting phenomenon, right? That um, the ports have literally become car parks for Chinese EVs. Chinese EVs, therefore, are flooding European ports. And numerous different uh, reporters have mentioned this. This isn't something that's an isolated report. It's actually become a global story now. Officials representing the ports are blaming Chinese automakers for clogging their facilities with Chinese EVs by failing to arrange for their cars to be transported to dealerships after they arrive. The thing is, Chinese manufacturers don't usually have their own dealerships. 
So they are relying on uh, third party dealerships to actually pick up the cars and that's not happening. Executives representing the port of Antwerp in Bruges, the busiest port for car imports in all of Europe, say that cars are arriving with nowhere to actually go. They said car distributors are increasingly using the port's car parks as a depot. Instead of stocking the cars at the dealers, they are collected at the car terminal. This is what has been mentioned to the Financial Times. According to supply chain experts and car industry executives um, in Europe, Chinese automakers aren't selling their vehicles fast enough, with some spending up to one and a half years before finding a buyer or being transported elsewhere. Now, I'm I think the only person who's reported on the fact that Chinese EV sales for the most part have been quite disappointing in Europe. They haven't been what anyone expected them to be. Have you ever looked at BYD's EV sales in Europe over the past 12 months? They've been well below what was predicted. Even the UK, the UK has huge amounts of stock of uh, BYD electric cars, but they're pretty much sitting idle. Their car sales are really, uh, really much, much smaller than BYD or anyone else would have expected them to be. Now, no one really knows the full reason for this because MG, their vehicles are selling quite well in Europe. They've been a huge success. But it's believed that buyers in Europe are more brand conscious and are unwilling to take the risk in buying a car when they don't know the brand. They've never heard of it before. The China Passenger Car Association Secretary General Kui Dong Shu told the Financial Times that booking inland shipping within Europe has been difficult for Chinese automakers. Additionally, he noted that the current guerrilla war-like car export strategy that Chinese automakers are practicing has the ability to throw themselves into an unfavorable situation. Uh, Truthfully, um, this is becoming a bit of a debacle. And one of the reasons is this, distributors, um, as in distributors for these Chinese EV brands in Europe, are charging some pretty hefty price premiums. So Tesla, when they sell their cars in another country, they almost always do it themselves. But Chinese EV makers, they're not doing that. They're selling their cars through third parties, through distributors, through dealerships that they don't actually own. So they can't control the pricing strategy and they can't actually control the outcomes as in how many vehicles are sold. What they're saying is without directly offending the Chinese government, Chinese manufacturers can't sell the cars they make in China. And so they are looking to Europe to absorb the excess manufacturing. Even the Chinese government believes that this, there is some truth to this story. They've commented similarly, saying production of EVs, while well, there's just too many vehicles being produced. There's new brands popping up every second week. Xiaomi all of a sudden said they're, they're building new factories. Uh, there's literally a new car brand building huge numbers of cars almost every week or two, at least every month. In other words, Manufacturers, though, are producing more cars than they can sell and dumping the problem onto the shoulders of others. That's according to Clean Technica. I'm not really sure that's true. I think car manufacturers, in uh, Chinese EV manufacturers, think these are great cars. This, you know, the pricing's great. The pricing they're selling them, they're trying to sell them for. I mean, if these EV manufacturers from China were selling them, if they were the distributors, they could sell them at much lower prices, but they're not. The situation at the ports comes as automakers in China, such as BYD, Xpeng, NIO, uh, SAIC, all of them are increasing their exports to Europe as part of an effort to keep their factories running and to capitalize on demand for low cost EV, Chinese EVs in the region. I mean, that's what Clean Technica is saying. Is this true? Well, the reality is that EV manufacturers in China are trying to take market share. Um, in China, that's where they're going more than anywhere else. They're really targeting legacy car manufacturers in China who are selling internal combustion vehicles. But the truth is there's about 90 EV manufacturers in China. It's clearly too many. I mean, even if there was 90 worldwide, that would be too many for the entire world, let alone one country. The number of cars exported by Chinese manufacturers to Europe is nearly 60% higher this year than last year with most of those vehicles making way to ports in Belgium, the United Kingdom, Germany, and the Netherlands. But really the only Chinese branded EVs that have taken off have been MG. And the reason I believe is because uh, buyers in Europe, they see MG as being European. They believe it's a British brand, even though it's actually Chinese owned. So they're more willing to purchase MG vehicles. 
Minister Wang Wentao said that the accusations of overcapacity were completely groundless and also touted that innovation and perfect supply chains were behind their performance. Um, the complete opposite, though, can be seen on the ground in Europe's port of entries. Brands like BYD are building teams in Europe from scratch and dealing with real-world logistical challenges. Those working on those logistics issues noted that they have struggled to find haulage companies to prioritize their vehicles since Chinese EVs are newcomers to the European market. So do you guys believe that story? Basically, you know, the Chinese government is saying the only reason that these vehicles are stuck in ports and not selling to consumers is because uh, truck companies are not willing to move them from the port to dealers. I don't believe that story. I think that's completely nonsensical. I think it's fantastical. Um, really, you're really going to have your EV stuck in a port for a year and a half because you can't find a, a logistics company to move them. Yeah, I don't believe that's true at all. But some people might. Maybe there is some truth to that story. I just think it's extremely unlikely. I think it really comes down to this. The distributors, they're charging hefty premiums. So Chinese EVs are nowhere near as cheap in Europe, nowhere near as what they are in China. I mean, if the prices were, say, 10% more than they are in China, I think people would be willing to take a risk because the, the cars are actually very good. There's a lot of people who are smart enough to know this, but the prices are not. The prices are often double the price. And that means Chinese EVs are just nowhere near as cheap in Europe as what they should be. And therefore, they're not selling like they should be either. But let me know what you think. Uh, this is clearly becoming a bit of an issue um, with these EVs flooding ports in Europe. It, there's something has to be done about this and I'm not sure what the solution is going to be, but something has to change. Thank you for watching.